So if you know your traditional logic, your Aristotelian logic, then these fallacies are going to be pretty easy to learn. So let's take a look at them. The first one's illicit contrary. And remember, on the top of your square of opposition, you have A and E propositions, and those are contraries. So if one is true, if A is true, then the other must be false, right? E must be false. But if A is false, we don't know what E is because they can both be false, but they can't both be true. So if I say all dogs are animals is true, then I can infer, based on this contrary relationship, that do no dogs are animals must be false, because they can't both be true. Right? So that's a valid inference based on the contrary relation. But sometimes we make an illicit or invalid inference based on this contrary relation. So if you look on the screen here, it says it is false that all diets are programs that create weight loss. Okay. So that's an A proposition. We're saying it's false. And then we're trying to infer from that that it's true that no diets are programs that create weight loss. So we're saying that since A is false, E must be true. But you can't do that with contraries because when one contrary is false, we don't know the value, the truth value of the other contrary. So we can't infer the statement is true simply because it's um, contrary is false. So this is a um, fallacy. And we can call it the illicit contrary. Let's look at illicit subcontrary now. Now remember, these are in the bottom of your square of opposition. Subcontraries are um, I and O propositions. And they can't both be false, but they can both be true. So kind of um, oppose each other in a, a mirror way that contraries do, but you know, different. So if one is false, like um, I is false, then, then O must be true. But if I is true, we don't know what O is. It's undetermined. So let's take a look at a good uh, inference based on this subcontrary relationship. If some diamonds are precious, if that's false, then it's uh, the case that some diamonds are not precious must be true. Right? So if that I proposition is false, then it follows that this O proposition must be true, because they can't both be false. Yeah? But now look at illicit subcontrary in the red. If I argue some rings are not beautiful, now that's an O proposition, so I'm saying that's true. Therefore, some rings are beautiful. That's an I proposition. I'm saying that's true. But you can't infer an I proposition is true from the fact that an O proposition is true because they're subcontraries, right? Um, and uh, they could both be true. So the fact that the premise is true here, that O is true, uh, we just don't know if the conclusion is true or false. Therefore, this is fallacious. Even if the premise is true, the conclusion could be false. So we call it illicit subcontrary. And then we have illicit subalternation. So again, look at your square of opposition. And remember the subalterns are the vertical lines on the square. And they connect the A and I and the E and O proposition. They connect the A and I propositions first. And then the subalterns um, also connect E and O, right? So the key is to remember that truth flows down and falsity flows up. So if I say all dogs are animals, that's an A proposition. And I say that's true then it follows that some dogs are animals, assuming dogs exist, right? So when A is true, truth flows down to um, I. So that's a good argument. But with illicit subalternation, I might try to make falsity go down or truth go up, and that's when this fallacy occurs. So let's take a look at the example. It's true that some ski areas are not settings for avalanches. Okay, So that is an O proposition. And it's true. And I'm trying to get from that this proposition. Therefore, no ski areas are setting for avalanches. So I'm trying to move from the fact that O is true to the conclusion that E is true. But remember, truth doesn't go up. Only falsity does. Right? Truth comes down from heaven. And falsity comes up from the devil, so to speak. Um, but um, So this is illicit subalternation. So when you know the traditional square of opposition, these three uh, bad inferences, you can quickly grasp them and see them in your mind. Let's look at conversion, of aversion, and contraposition, see how they can help us. If you look at the uh, four categorical uh, statements on the screen here on the right, remember when we do conversion, we just flip them. We just flip the subjecting predicate. So instead of saying all S is P, we say all P is S. But remember, conversion only works for some propositions. When we try to uh, do conversion on propositions like the A and O ones, then it's illicit. OK, so returning uh, back to this, so it's illicit when we try to convert an A or an O proposition. So if I say all dogs are animals, all SSP, 
and uh, try to infer from that that all animals are dogs, we would say that's an illicit conversion. Okay, you just can't do that. But if I say um, no squares are circles, this is the second row, E propositions, then I can say uh, no circles are squares. Those mean the same thing. So that is a legitimate, a non-fallacious conversion. So um, this sort of fallacious thinking arises when we try to convert A or O propositions. All right. All right, let's look at the next one, illicit contraposition. Remember, uh, contrapositions where you flip the subject and predicate and you take the complement of each. Okay, So we have all SRP, all non-P or non-S. And again, we have the same sort of thing going on. This only works for, for two of the four categorical propositions. If you try to contrapose the E and the I propositions, then we say it's illicit contraposition. And you can see an example here. If I say no popular casinos are establishments without bright lights, okay, this is a E proposition. And then I take the contraposition, therefore no establishments with bright lights or unpopular casinos, um, then that's invalid, right? Because you can't contrapose an E statement and get the equivalent meaning. And that's from Patrick Hurley. Now with aversion, remember aversion works for all four statements, so there's not going to be a special type of fallacy there. And then on the final screen you see three problems, and I'm going to show you the answers to those in about five seconds, so if you want to test yourself, go ahead. Thanks.